I'll start again. Because we are spiritual beings, we have some very specific needs. And one of those needs is really to live in alignment with our spirit. That means to live in alignment with that divine presence that we are emanations of. That means to live in alignment with the infinite potential that is the very nature of the divine, to live in alignment with creativity, which is the essence that we are created out of and the essence that we still are, to live in alignment with love, and to live in alignment with oneness. All of those qualities and characteristics are the very nature of the divine and how it expresses itself in this world. So when we are in alignment with our spirit, living in alignment with our spirit, that means that, that we think and we act and we behave in ways that are loving and generous and kind and open-hearted. When we are living in alignment with our spirit, we feel our connection with that divine presence. And then we feel our connection with the people that we are around when we're living from our spirit and in alignment with it. We live in oneness and we live from that place of oneness. That's why it feels so good to be loving and to be kind because when we're doing that, we're in alignment with our spirit. That's why it feels so good to create art, to create anything, whether it's painting a picture or creating something out of clay or planting a garden or writing poetry. All of those things are activities where we are in alignment. We are being a conduit for that divine presence to express through. And whenever we are doing that in any way, it feels really good to us. Because when we are doing that, when we are doing anything, acting out of those qualities and characteristics, not only are we in alignment with our own spirit, but we are reproducing the activity of that infinite one. We are acting out of its own nature and out of our own essential nature. And that's why it feels so good to be here. When we are here, we get to feel our spirit. We get to feel our connection with each other. We get to feel our connection with that one infinite presence of which we are each a part. And so we have a second need as a spiritual being. And that is to make a positive difference wherever we are. That is the very foundation living from our spirit, the foundation for being a beneficial presence in this world. Because when we live from our spirit our in and are connected with our spirit, we automatically come to the world as a beneficial presence. And so we talk about that a lot here at Living Beyond Limits, is living in alignment and being a conduit for that one so that we are acting as a beneficial presence in the world. And so the title of my talk today is On Sacred Ground. And I'm talking about the fact that we are always on sacred ground. We are always on sacred ground simply because we are there. And the more we are living in alignment with our own spirit and with that, uh, that divine presence within us, the more consecrated we make that ground and the more sacred that ground becomes upon which we stand. One of the things that I love about this philosophy at Centers for Spiritual Living is it's really about living our spirituality. It's about living it all the time on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not a philosophy that's just about Sundays or holidays or living our spirituality when it's convenient. It's about living our spirituality all of the time. And so from my perspective, there isn't something that is the sacred and the profane. There isn't this that is connected to our spirituality and then this that is common and mundane and not connected to spirit or spirituality. It's all connected to our spirituality and it's all part of our path. It's all part of our spiritual path. The second thing that I love about this philosophy and what we teach at Centers for Spiritual Living is that it encourages us 
and it teaches us to live up to that great something that exists within each one of us, rather than to bow down to something that is outside of us. In this philosophy, there is no need to touch the garment, or to kiss the ring, or to bow down. Is all we need to do is touch that divine presence within us to awaken to our own spirit, to awaken to our own beingness. We must only touch the presence within to awaken that within ourselves. And this philosophy of Centers for Spiritual Living and what we teach assists us in that awakening. And so today I'm talking about two different components to living our spirituality because I'm really talking about living our spirituality because that's what we do here. The two different components are to be it and to see it. And so when I'm talking about being it, I'm talking about being a representative for that divine presence. We talk about that a lot here, being a conduit for that one, being it in expression in this world. That means being a place of love and a place of inclusion. That means standing in our own wholeness and in our own power. It means coming from a place of oneness when we're living our spirituality. When we're living our spirituality, we know who we are, that we are emanations of that divine presence, of that infinite one. And then we act from that place in this world, that we are one with the allness of life, and we act and we speak and we talk and we come from that place in our lives. That is the foundation for being a beneficial presence. And that is the focus here much of the time. That is what I talk about much of the time. And we stand for that being a beneficial presence and we stand in that. That's what we're about. And the second component to living a spiritual life or to living our spirituality isn't something that I talk as much about. And that is about seeing witnessing, beholding the divine light that is in everyone and in everything. Beholding the divine light that is at the center of every situation, every circumstance, that is at the center of everything in this world and all that is happening. And so that might look like seeing the light seeing, witnessing, recognizing the wholeness and the power in a person who thinks they don't have any. It might look like seeing the wholeness and the power and the creativity in the homeless person that you talk to on the street, or seeing the wholeness and the power in that person who is addicted to drugs. It is seeing and hearing and speaking the sacred. It is hearing the sacred and seeing the sacred and speaking the sacred. That is seeing the light that is within everything. And so will you say that with me? I see the sacred. I see the sacred. I hear the sacred. I hear the sacred. I speak the sacred. I speak the sacred. Everything is sacred. that might be also look something like beholding and seeing and witnessing that Christ light, the perfection, the good in your neighbor or your coworker or the person that you disagree with. It might look like beholding the wisdom and the divine intelligence and the oneness within every single person in Congress, not just the people who vote the way you want them to vote. That is a healing presence when we behold the light that is within another person, when we see that spiritual truth that is behind, within, back of what is showing itself on the surface. That is the consciousness where healing takes place. 
And so Alan Cohen tells a story about looking for and witnessing and how that calls it forward. He says, Dr. William Parker was a psychologist assigned to work with a young man with a long history of drug addiction. This patient showed up with a thick dossier of dire diagnoses and failed treatments. The psychologist, however, did not focus on his patient's addiction. Over the term of the man's treatment, the psychologist kept asking the fellow, who are you when you're not an addict? And what did you do this week that was powerful and productive? Over time, the patient responded to the psychologist's vision of him as a strong, healthy person. Eventually, he transformed and dropped his addiction for the first time since entering treatment many years earlier. How you see yourself determines who you will become, and how you see others determines who they will become in your presence. If you are a psychologist, healer, teacher, or parent, or metaphysician, you have the power to transform your clients, students, or children, and the people that are around you. If you see them as broken, needy, or impossible, this is the behavior they will manifest. If you view them as whole, capable, and talented, that is who they will become. Your vision of them is the greatest gift you can give them or the greatest disservice you can give them, depending on how you choose to see them. At a weekend workshop, a fellow arrived with his 19-year-old son, whom he introduced to me as a severe depressive. When the father went on to describe all of his son's problems in glory detail, I felt bad for the boy who was standing right there being labeled a loser. I told the father, let's see how big we can make your son this weekend. During the seminar, I addressed the young man as worthy, capable, and, how, and that is how he responded to us. By the end of the program, he was the star of the seminar and everyone fell in love with him. At the conclusion, he gave a great and extraordinary inspiring talk about how great it felt to be regarded as good. Take care of how you see people, for the one you see is the one you will get. You know, I know we've all heard stories of teachers and their expectations of children and how that brings it forward. Our expectations and what we see brings that forward in everyone. Haven't you ever been in the company of someone who thinks that you're stupid or thinks that you're incapable? And how do you act when you're with them? Do you get nervous and you get awkward and you certainly aren't standing in your power and being all that you can be? And if you're with people that see your greatness, you come to the show with more, you present more, and feel like you have more confidence and more authority, and you bring that, the gifts within you forward in a greater way. That's what happens, determined by what we are looking for, what we are seeing that is invisible, not to the naked eye, and what we're expecting. The problem is it's so easy easy to get angry and frustrated with the things that are going on in the world. It's so easy to feel helpless about the stuff that's going on in our own lives and in the world and in this country. But we are spiritual beings. And as metaphysicians, as people that are awake to the fact that they are walking a spiritual path, we are being called to hold two realities at the same time. Yes, there is stuff going on, and at the same time, perfection is present. At the same time, perfection is present. We can only see that perfection when we look through spiritual eyes. We can only see that invisible perfection that is back of and within everything when we look through the eyes of God. When we look through the eyes of the God of our own being. In the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes says, the practitioner, that's you, a practitioner of the science of mind, the practitioner must realize that back of the appearance is reality, capital R reality. 
And it is the business, it is his business to uncover this reality. He goes on to say, so we must try to see and sense that always back of the appearance, perfection is. That's the consciousness that creates healing. It creates a space for healing to happen. Seeing the presence of God within a person, within a situation, is seeing that perfection. It's seeing divine intelligence. It's seeing wholeness. It's seeing oneness. In the midst of the seeming problem, it's seeing that is there also as a reality, that it's present and real. In fact, it's more real than what's going on out here because it's permanent, it's non-changing, it's eternal. That is the consciousness of the Christ. That is the consciousness that Jesus stood in and was able to heal from. The truth that that realm, that perfection, that wholeness is present and real and available here and now in this moment. You know, we all know the story about the loaves and the fishes. That Jesus was out preaching to the multitudes and the crowd got hungry. And he asked his disciples, how many loaves and fishes do you have? And they said, seven. He didn't go, oh my gosh, there's only seven. What are we going to do? There's never going to be enough. This is never going to work out. What a problem this is. That's not what he did. He raised his hands up in thanksgiving, giving thanks for the principle of abundance that is behind and within the seven, behind and within the crowd, he gave thanks for the truth of abundance and the truth of opulence and the truth of the boundless good of this universe. And somehow, whether you think that they fell out of the sky or whether you think that merchants showed up with baskets of bread and fish to feed the crowd, it doesn't really matter. His consciousness created enough food to feed everyone with seven baskets left over. And I love um, Eric Butterworth talks about that, that we think that it's a miracle that it came out of the sky. It's no less of a miracle if all the merchants showed up with those, bringing those things. It's consciousness that creates an atmosphere for healing of whatever it is, any dis-ease. And so in the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes also says, healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. It is revealing an idea which is already perfect. Healing is not a process, it's a revelation. The revelation of truth with a capital T is what creates the healing. And so I invite you for a moment just to go through a process with me. So I invite you to close your eyes for a second and to think about someone whom you care about that is having a hard time right now. Do you got one? See that person in your mind's eye. And now, imagine seeing that person through God's eyes, through the eyes of the divine, through the eyes of infinite potential. How do you see them looking through God's eyes? Do you see their wholeness? Do you see their power? Do you see that infinite potential is present within them?
looking through the eyes of God, do you see that the limitations that they perceive that they have do not exist? Beholding this, beholding them in the truth creates a space for healing. Witnessing the ultimate reality of them, that is the consciousness where healing takes place. And so I invite you to open your eyes. As we see the spiritual truth in another person, it calls it forward. Just like the person when you're with that sees your potential and your goodness, calls it forward. It creates a space so that healing can happen. It's like fanning a little tiny spark that's inside of them and keeping fanning it so that it has the opportunity to grow into a flame. That's a gift that you can give them, and that's a gift that you can give to this world. So we are being called to know perfection in the midst of the seeming chaos and turmoil and things that we don't like. To see the perfection that is present on the invisible realm within it and behind it and all around it. We are being called to see the presence of the infinite one that is the very fabric that it is made of. We are being called to know that perfection is at the center of everything. And my last quote out of the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes says, dis-ease. Dis-ease is a fact, but not a truth. It is an experience but not a spiritual reality. We must transcend the appearance even though we admit it as a fact. Perfection is the truth. Everything else that's going on is transient. It is not permanent. It is not static. It is constantly changing. Perfection, the presence of God, is the only thing that is permanent. It is the truth of the situation. And so we're being called to see the sacred and to hear the sacred and to speak the sacred in the midst of the craziness. I went to a conference last week, Centers for Spiritual Living Summer Conference, and one of the ministers that spoke, his name was Reverend Rafe, and he said, the messiness of life takes us to expansion. The messiness of life and the discomfort that it creates inside of us is calling us to spiritual practice. The messiness of life and the discomfort it creates is calling us to go deeper. It is calling us to see through the eyes of that presence of God that is the very God of our own being to see through the eyes of that presence. It is calling us to know the truth. It is calling us to be the presence in action. And so I have two invitations for you this week. One is to ask yourself the question, how can I show up as the good of the universe? To ask yourself that question every day. To ask yourself that question numerous times a day. How can I show up as the goodness of the universe? And the second one is to be that presence, to see that presence, to hear that presence, to look for that presence, to speak that presence, and to be that presence. And then we will be consecrating that sacred ground upon which we are already standing and making it that much more sacred. And so I thank every single one of you for walking this path and saying yes to the call of the divine within your own heart and soul to be 
bringing this light into the world through your actions and your thoughts and your words and calling that divine light forward through your inner vision and your spiritual practice. Thank you to every single one of you. And so I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer. And so that is exactly what I do is I take my attention from this material realm to that realm of truth, where the absolute is fully present, is fully existent in its fullness and in its allness. This one creative power and intelligence of the universe from which everything ha that has sprung forth, this one and same creative and loving intelligence that permeates all things, that animates all things, is all things. And so I know that the fullness of the presence of the divine and all that it is, is fully present in every single moment, in every single circumstance, in every situation and every conversation and every heart and every home and every person and everything, for everything is imbued with this one. Everything is an outpicturing of this one creative life force, intelligence, love, boundless good, opulence, oneness, energy. It is all that one. That is the thing that the quantum physicists call consciousness. It is the thing that Ernest Holmes calls mind. It is the thing that religionists call God, and it is all the same thing. And so today we step in as participants of creating the world and creating a world that works for everyone. And so today we heed that call of our own hearts and our own souls to see that presence everywhere we look, to behold it in every situation and in every person. We heed that call of our own souls to be that presence in action to show up as light and as love and as peace, as joy, as harmony, as the truth of oneness. And we act as a healing balm in this world as we walk in this light and as this light and with this light. For yes, indeed, the outermost God and the innermost God is one God. And so today we magnify that presence through our actions and through our words and through our consciousness. And healing is the result. And so it is with a grateful heart that I release this prayer into the creative law of the universe, knowing that it is unfolding itself in this moment. That healing is taking place across this entire planet with our loved ones and with strangers with people we will never even meet. And so if you are in agreement with these words, I invite you to join me in saying, and so it is. And so it is. Mm -hmm.